Hello. Welcome to the den of sentient people. Also, I brought Stalker here because it's technically his house. So he's abandoned his sword, as you can see. Anyways, this is Caliban re-adapted. And we'll get into that. So I will see you over in the simulacrum in just a moment. All right, so here we are over in my current personal favorite simulacrum. First off, we're going to take off the companion so he's not uh, auto-soloing everything, essentially. I also need to swap my Caliban build away from the one that I want to use for one moment, just because I don't have his one still on that. And you're about to find out the reason for that. So, uh, this is mostly an update of my previous Caliban video build video. There's only a couple of things have changed, and even that was more personal taste. It's slightly related to the rework, but uh, we'll touch on that in a second. First off, what does Caliban do? If you're brand new here, which is highly likely because almost no one had Caliban before, never mind used him, we'll go over the basics. Caliban's passive allies in affinity range gain up to 50% resistance to the types of damage they are currently taking. This is basically a half strength version of adaptation that you get as a passive and share with your teammates rather than having to spend however much mod capacity and a mod slot on it it's not game breaking it's not going to overwhelm and wow you it's quite a nice as a passive goes that's the important thing because you'll see a lot of discussion out there where they're like this is useless uh, everyone is so you run adaptation and it doesn't stack uh, it's a passive. You're, it's it's meant to help you out when you're not running adaptation. The same as Equinox's isn't as strong as Equilibrium, or Saren's isn't as strong as the actual status duration mods, etc. Uh, typically, you don't run them together. If you do run them together, Caliban's does decay slower than adaptation, particularly if you haven't maxed your adaptation, which is a common thing to save capacity. Uh, that's really definitely a niche use, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we've got Caliban's 1. I'm going to bring this up to some folks here. We'll set them to regular level 100. Just some Grenier will be fine. Caliban's 1 no longer is a hold to spin and damage enemies. Instead, you dash through enemies with a spin. You do give them 3 stacks of Tau status, or 4. It has a weird kind of randomness to it. Uh, for a very short period over and all, that will give them 20 or 30% chance to take an extra status, essentially, when you deal status. Uh, you deal basically no damage. One thing you might notice when I ran through them is I got all my energy back, because if you hit it, for every enemy you hit, you get 25% of the ability cost back. You cannot gain extra energy, however, for that. Uh, it also does give you a little health and shields, but again, that's not it's not a spectacular amount unless you're hitting a huge amount, and the fact that you have to throw yourself into the middle of enemies with it also doesn't really play well into that. For instance, I will take off the AI if you watch while I'm dashing. I can still take damage. There's not iframes on that or anything like that. So yeah, that does have not really a whole lot of use. That's why he got Helminth off. So I'm going to go switch back to my actual build now. Uh, it's better than what he had, but it's still not really anything that I can find any actual synergy or usage with. Moving on to his two. His two is the big stomp wave. <laughs> Like so, you can see that also puts a single stack of Tau status on everyone, which is not too great. It's 10% extra status chance. More importantly, though, that 2 is giving them, with my current build, and no stacks of Molt Augmented, 57% damage vulnerability. Uh, depending on your taste for power strength, you can scale that up more. Also, it's obviously crowd controlling them as well. But yeah, then you typically would want to follow that up by doing that. With some kind of big AoE move or weapon. 
Uh, I'm going to get into his four first here, so. But we're going to summon these. So these are the Conculus. This is what his old thing was. You now summon all three at once. They run up, they melee guys. They do a moderate amount of damage, but as you can tell, they're not exactly uh, doing this intelligently or <laughs> particularly effectively. If I do this, they'll get a little more mileage out of their damage. The fancy thing is if I do this, which is his four, they will also mirror it. That said, they tend to mirror it at the same spot. And as you can see, even that quad blast didn't kill these level 100 bombards that are not steel path. Their mirroring effect also does not mirror the lingering field that strips the armor and shields. So I find you'll get typically the limited use out of these. These are the new Ortholis. They shoot guys, they do deal some damage, and they can clear up fodder. Generally though, you want them to go into their mortar mode like this because they will apply a whole bunch of tau status and do more damage. Uh, one big problem is you can't force them to do that. They also have a bad habit of doing this. Just sitting behind a wall in mortar mode, not doing anything. Uh, the long suffering problem we've had with every summon in the game essentially is that they're brain dead and stupid. They're regular. Anyways, it's a good time to talk about Tau status because Tau status itself at the full 10 caps gives you a extra status proc guaranteed for everyone you inflict or roughly therein. Uh, it's important to note, nothing in Caliban's kid inflicts any kind of status. You have to bring a status gun like the Aki Core to actually cap capitalize on that. So, uh, he's locked into a weapon choice, by and large, if you actually want to take advantage of his kit and his... The Ortholis are a good point to mention there, because... If you're not doing that, they basically serve not a huge purpose other than having some passive fodder clearing damage. The fancy one here, which I'm going to turn the AI back on, is the Summulist. And I'm going to chop a few Xmas into the pack just to spice things up here with the AI off. Uh, that one doesn't count because it was already targeting me, but... But yeah, you can see even the x miss here... ...are shooting at, that have Overguard, are shooting at the, uh... ...summons instead of me. Like this guy here. Uh, one thing that Taunt does not work tend to work on is... ...stuff that auto-aims at you, like the pools and the Jade Lights. I think that's a bug, technically. You also notice they can aim the pools and the jade lights at you through walls if they become aware of your presence. The other neat thing about these is if you watch that number up in the top that's currently a 575, if I summon any of the other ones, it's a significantly lower number, 398. That's your shield regen per second that these things are off-putting. He does have to summon them all first, but it's because there's more of these than there are of the other ones. Uh, effectively, they give this to your allies too now. That was probably the biggest buff in the rework as far as these went. Uh, one of the bigger buffs in the rework is that, uh, the entire team just gets 575 shields a second, which is healing. It's essentially like having five wisp motes on top of you, as long as you have shields, as you can tell I do. Moving on. We'll pause the AI again. This got a damage upgrade. As you can tell, it's still not astounding. Even if I lift these guys, it's taking extra shots to kill them. The big thing, of course, is this big circle you can see kind of burning. This actually sticks around and removes the armor and shields of anything that steps into it. 
Uh, should note that both the two and the circle and the four seem to have had a stealth nerf to their range, particularly the circle and the four. Uh, that is one of the reasons for a change in my build. The two also, not always, but seems to have some trouble getting through walls, which it used to not do. You can tell I, I can get through walls because I'm lifting the guy at the back there, but it's weirdly inconsistent. So yeah, we got the build in here. So I swapped my Prime Vigor, which was just survivability for overextended because those new summons do give you more shield regen and they're better, more consistent about it. So I let the survivability fall where it may. You could you could go with Prime Vigor here too if you're particularly worried about having some health to absorb the toxin proc. Uh, there's not a heat. It's like 300 points difference between the two overall. Uh, generally, most content, if you can avoid the toxins, the shield's going to do better. You could also equip some helmet, one helmet or another that will clear the toxin or block the toxin. Titania and Trinity off the top of my head will both do that. Uh, other than that, we swapped out. I think I had energy siphon for growing power. That was just a straight upgrade. I think I didn't have growing power when I made the other video. Uh, we where we threw an overextended, which is to kind of counter those range reductions I mentioned, uh, we cut our defense reduction here down significantly. Uh, it will still get up to 100 once our mold augment fills up, but it can take, a, or we, or if we get the growing power, but it takes a little to get there. Uh, not much else has changed from the original video, so I'll just kind of bullet point. Arcane Energize speaks for itself. If you don't have Arcane Energize, uh, the other one you can kind of swap in here is Arcane Steadfast. That will just give you more energy economy on your abilities. Molt Augmented, we're kind of requiring for strength. You can try and throw in Blind Rage there for extra strength if you want. You could try and... If you find you're not needing the range, you can take over Extended off. It's a valid option. Or you could swap over Extended with the Augur mod that gives a range instead. There's a few different ways to play around with that if you're having trouble actually getting your strength cap fully up. Some of it would require more form from on my part here. Uh, we got redirection. That's the big shields. That's our main health pool. Shields, worth noting, have this reduced 50% for everything but toxins, so they're technically twice as strong as they look. Uh, the health is not quite there. For those new players who have just picked up Caliban, normally you wouldn't get Caliban while well, you could still technically be called a new player, but shields have built-in DR. Health also gets DR from armor, but you can see it's less than 50%. Uh, we got Umbral Intensify. If you don't have that, just run Normal Intensify. Uh, do not run the other Intensify variants because this one literally won't function it to do anything. <laughs> and the Precision Intensify, if you have that, would only affect this for... Uh, you'd have to be really gimmicking into the four build to do it because even the four, even trying to build the four build for damage, you're going to want power on your two for the vulnerability. Continuity, that's because the duration on both the four and the two seem to have gotten a little bit of a downtick. Uh, these got massively buffed on their duration, so it's not for them, but I left it in there. Again, run regular continuity if you want. Overextended, we covered that already. Archon stretch run regular stretch unless you're going to do what I did, which is Heilman Thing Coil Horizon. Even that's technically not a huge necessity, but uh, the thing with Coil Horizon that I have is I can do this and then this one. Interesting that, that didn't work. Oh, that's because I'm used to full strips. Basically, the, the difference between stretch and Archon stretch is this will regenerate a little of the energy I spent on it by dealing electric damage. It's a very minor buff at all, but if, <laughs> if you, they're the same polarity. It's just this one costs more. 
uh, more ability, strength, prime flow. If you take this off, Kelvin actually has very tiny energy. You can't even shoot his four twice. So I do not recommend. I would highly recommend getting prime flow or arc on flow if you can't. If the bear is not around, you can get arc on flow instead which has the same strength and a bonus effect that's completely pointless to caliban if you can't if you're not far enough to get either of those do just go with regular flow over here archon shards what i would say is you probably want at least one yellow shard or at least one yellow tau forge shard the rest is basically up to personal taste uh the purple ones even are technically part of other experiments that have nothing to do with caliban himself you could, of course, put in some red shards in there to offset the ability strength deficit from overextended, which I might even do myself. Uh, you could also throw some in there for duration if you find you're needing to hold the guys up with your two longer. Over on weapons, the bad core is not really doing anything. Uh, the Aki core is a sentient gun, which also does a whole lot of status. Remember why I mentioned this is a multi-shot ribbon, by the way? Uh, this is definitely increasing the power of this, but you could just run cold in that slot. You might even want to give it more status chance if you run the cold with the status chance. Or you could run Ice Storm to get some magazine capacity, which would also help out Sentient Surge a lot, because you need to not reload the Aki Core when you get your initial kills. A uh, big thing here is you'll notice there's no room going on for base damage, essentially, other than some from Galvanized Shots. We are running Cascadia Flare, that's why he did charge. Otherwise, I would probably run Convulsion to get more immediate damage on the enemies because Electric goes off instantly and has an AoE component. Uh, and yeah, the Occupore, you probably already saw it. Could I roll? Yeah, there we go. But yeah, the the, the Occupore is a very powerful gun in and of itself once it gets its Sentient Surge stuff going. If you don't have Sentient Surge, it should rotate back into the Nightwave Augments at some point. And you can pick it up for Nightwave credits. You can also use any of your favorite status guns, your Ignis Race, a Convectrix, an Atomos, a Nucor, a Tenet a, a Psychron, or a Tenet Psychron. The world is your oyster, as that goes. You can even do throw your Zorus or your Glavin and get buff force procs off those. It will work for those as well. So that basically covers Caliban. I'll throw some short steel path footage onto the end of this video. But if you found this informative, let me know. Drop a comment, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more. Should have all my Warframe builds videos down in a playlist in the description as well. And there's some other links there. You have the link to watch live on Twitch where we tested out a whole bunch of this stuff yesterday as of this recording. As well as other ways to support the channel and interact with the content. That's all and have a good one. Your enemies have grown fierce. Use all that you have learned. Void fishers. You need them to open a relic, but are you confident you can withstand their fury? A fisher, defend yourself and use reactant to open relics. They're dropping reactant. Use it to crack open a relic. Don't forget the reactant. You need more to open that relic. We have got to find a terminal. Proceed and prepare. Terminal spotted. Upload me and prepare to defend. Stay focused. There's a heavy unit approaching. Fought with honor. I'm in, Tenno. This will take a moment. Attack us? And we'll count. Still working on.
Here, move on. <laughs> <laughs> 